Hi, it's Diana. <laughs> Already thrilled. I am here to look at the intersection of food and literature. Please join me, literature lovers and food friends. This is an exciting, okay. It is exciting. And I thought, you know, I always say I'm excited. I don't always say I'm excited, but a lot of times I do, and it's because I am, and I am this time too. Trying to contain the excitement. Don't know why I'm trying to contain the excitement. Um, I'm doing poetry. And, okay, so, re and what I'm doing is from this book, Prayers from the Ark, it's, I have the translation. I do not have the French version. It is, it, it originally is in French. And I'm doing the Prayer of the Bee. So many things. Thing one is the book itself. This is a book, not this book, because I got a copy and I'm guessing it's, it feels like a library book because it's got this shiny thing, which I keep getting a reflection off of. Um, but my mother had a copy of this book. I don't know if that copy is still in their house. I haven't looked for it. Um, and I looked at this book as a child and we would read these books, this, these, they're poems in the form of prayers. And we would read these poems. And so it ha I have this nostalgic feeling for this book. You know how sometimes you've forgotten about something and then suddenly there it is? Do you get this overwhelming feeling of nostalgia or memories or oh, and it's like you like it didn't exist and then it does again that's how I felt with this book um, and I love the illustrations I'm mean, they're they're they look like graphite so they look like pencil drawings to me and um, it's I don't know it's just they're they're simple and appealing and unassuming thing too. This is just the second poem I do and I'm going to go ahead and jump right in to the actual poem. Um, it's not very long and I'm going to say before we jump into the poem that the food is honey. The, it's kind of a um, an implied or a one step over connection because food is not mentioned in the poem. But it's a bee. It's a bee, and the bee kind of talks about honey. Um, another thing about the book is the, I mentioned it. It is originally it was originally written in French. So I'm reading a translation. So here are there are layers here. There's the the layer of um, of my interpretation or my experience or my response to these pieces this work and I, okay i'm talking about it as a book as a whole but i'm just going to look at one and that's the prayer of the bee so my response to the to the bee prayer slash poem um the translator's response to the original and her um whatever her philosophy is in trying to take the efforts of taking the original French and putting it into English. And then there is the the other another layer of the author speaking in the voice of an animal. So the author is not a bee. Um, she is trying to sound like or imagining what a bee would say in communication with God. So there's so many layers, so many. Thing three, what I usually do with poetry. I'm gonna look at, look at it. And I did mention already the illustration, the way that the book is formed, and I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, is that the illustration is on one side and then the prayer slash poem is on the next page. So it, it follows that throughout the book. Is that illustration also in the original French? That I don't know. Hmm. Also just da uh, just like ping, I remember this. There's a second book. My mother did have the second book. I don't rem I remember not liking it. It's not I don't remember liking it. I remember thinking, "Oh, this is not as good as the other one." 
Um, and then this poem itself is small. There's also like this little tiny illustration here of a flower. If I count all of the lines, it's a one stanza poem. Huh, okay, that's an interesting thought because I was going to say, if I count all the lines, including at the bottom the word amen, then there are 14 lines. But there's a big old break here. So is this a stanza by itself? Because I was gonna say it's a one stanza poem. I don't know. I don't. I, I. I. That's a new thought. I'm gonna have to think about that one. Um, in the 14 lines, there are one, two, three sentences, and I. I'm like going three because. Yeah, there are three. There are three. To me, the words are not. They are um, approachable. They're not overly complex. And neither is the idea of a bee. I don't have to try hard to imagine what this thing of a bee is. I can just go outside happily. Happily I go, because sometimes bees are around. But I, when I see bees in my yard with my flowers and stuff, I thank them. Thank you, pollinator, for coming into my, my yard. Like that. There are also things uh, about this poem that tell me right off, like I don't have to guess. For example, the title of the poem, The Prayer of the Bee, tells me what the intention of the poem is. This is intended to be a prayer. It also tells me who the speaker is of the bee. So the bee is the speaker of this poem. And the first line of the poem, which is the word Lord, tells me who the bee is speaking to. So right away, with the title and the first word, I know what the intention of the poem is, who's speaking, and who that being is speaking to. I'm ready. I am ready to read this poem. Okay. The Prayer of the Bee. Lord, I am not one to despise your gifts. May you be blessed who spread the riches of your sweetness for my zeal. Let my small span of ardent life melt into our great communal task to lift up to your glory this temple of sweetness, a citadel of incense, a holy candle, myriad celled, molded of your graces and of my hidden work. Amen. That was the poem. And we're going to look at it closer, take it apart even, next time. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you enjoyed this or any of my other videos, ee, that makes me so happy, uh, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. See y'all next time.